Ukraine is known in the world for its documentary films. Back in the late 1980s, a documentary by Ukrainian filmmaker and cameraman Volodymyr Shevchenko, Chernobyl, a chronicle of difficult weeks, won the prize of nine international film festivals and entered the history of Ukrainian and world cinema in the 20th century. 132 countries of the world purchased the film for screening. In 2005, for the first time, a short documentary by Ukrainian film director Ihor Strombitsky, titled Travelers, won the award for Best Documentary at the Cannes Film Festival. Ukrainian documentaries won the highest number of awards in 2015 to 2017. The film Winter on Fire, Ukraine's Fight for Freedom, about peaceful protest that led to the revolution of dignity in Ukraine, was awarded with the Audience Award in the category Best Documentary at the Toronto International Film Festival. Then it was awarded the Honorary Prize of the US Television Academy and was nominated in 2015 for the Oscar in the category Best Documentary Feature Film. The documentary film Ukrainian Sheriffs, directed by Roman Bondarchuk in 2016, was also nominated by Ukraine for the Oscar Award in the category Best Foreign Film and received a special jury prize at the International Documentary Film Festival in Amsterdam. A film of Ukrainian and German documentary School No. 3 about children from the ATO zone last year received the grand prize in the competition program Generation 14 Plus of the 67th Berlin International Film Festival. The Ukrainian film about the motorcycle journey through the Carpathians, Dusters by Stanislav Horenko, became one of the platinum winners of the Motion Picture Prize of the International Independent Film Awards in 2017 in Los Angeles, US. Such successes of the Ukrainian cinematographers are not accidental, because the tradition of Ukrainian documentary cinema go back to the last centuries. For the first time, filming in Ukraine took place in 1896, which was a year after the first filming of the Lumiere brothers. It was the work of Kharkiv citizen and photographer Alfred Fedetsky. Two decades later, films were one way or another made in Ukraine. Alfred Fedetsky is considered the first Ukrainian operator of documentary film. He filmed several short documentaries, including Jigatifka Cossacks of, of the 1st Orenburg Cossack Regiment, Departure of the Train from the Kharkiv Station, The Cross Procession from Kuryash to Kharkiv, People's Strolls on the Horse Square and others. Most of them are dated in 1896. The first newsreel in Kiev in 1907 was filmed by photographer Mykola Kozlovsky. His film was called Flood on the Dnipro in Kiev 1907. Mykola Kozlovsky is a former Kiev citizen and the first Russian cameraman who later shot the first Russian film Stenka Razin. But we cannot seriously talk about Ukrainian cinema as it was in the structure of Russian cinema under the influence of the Russian Empire, and Ukraine had no signs of statehood or an independent state at the time. The first attempts to create national cinematography were during the reign of Ukrainian hetman Pavlo Skoropatsky. In 1918, the documentary films The Hetman's Residence, The Proclamation of Independence of Ukraine, Kiev is Liberated, and The Ukrainian Commandant Ravinsky were filmed. However, in the conditions of wars and the national liberation struggle, the plans for creating a cinema structure and producing Ukrainian films did not come to fruition. Actually, Ukrainian documentary cinema started in 1922 when the all-Ukrainian photo film management was being created. This, in fact, is an analog of the modern state film committee with all its state powers and capabilities. The managers of the all-Ukrainian photo cinema management, first of all, were engaged in setting up a cinematographic business as an industry. This is very important. There were allocated fairly significant funds and currency resources in order to purchase equipment and start building Ukrainian technical cinematographic enterprises and also organize the work of the Odessa Film Studio, which was practically destroyed during the war. It was the only film studio in Ukraine that could become the basis for future film production. The Yalta film studio was rented out. Although it was small, it after all suffered less during the war. Newsreel became a special channel thanks to which the dissemination of information for the mass audience became possible. Cinematography was an important means of disseminating information. Naturally, in the absence of television, and even more importantly, the illiteracy of the population, 
Several newsreels of Kino Medel, Kino Mahavik, and so on were created. To a large extent, the dissemination of useful knowledge through the use of cognitive and popular science films was established. They were created in different spheres of activity, let's say in medicine, agriculture, and in the fight against epidemics. Films that distributed sanitary knowledge among the local population were very important. Considerable resources were allocated, and the best staff of Ukrainian cinematography was engaged in the process. Many of those who dealt with the chronicle, and especially popular science propaganda films later became famous Ukrainian film directors and operators. Among them noteworthy are Oleksiy Shvachko, the brilliant Hungarian operator, a totally underestimated personality and the scriptwriter of the film about the Dnipro hydroelectric power plant. The leading themes of those times were the reconstruction of industry and agricultural production and the restructuring of everyday life. However, a certain part of the repertoire consisted of local and ethnographic documentary films. For example, in 1927 a documentary film titled Jews and Earth was created at the Yalta Film Studio and was strongly supported by the all-Ukrainian photo cinema management. In the film it is described how the Jewish colonists inhabited the Black Sea and Crimean lands and represented a single large family on the backdrop of increased anti-Semitism in the USSR in the 1920s. The author of the script was the poet Vladimir Mayakovsky and the assistant was his friend Lilia Brick. As a rule, many famous directors of feature films began their career in documentary cinematography. Faust Lopatinsky, Oleksiy Kapler, Grigory Grichur Cherikover, Ukrainian film director and playwright Georgi Tassin, before creating his film masterpieces Night Carrier, Nazar Stadolia and Karmeluk, was also a documentary filmmaker. The author of a very famous popular science fiction film, Askania Nova, was Georgi Tassin. The film was awarded the Golden Medal at an international exhibition in France. It had great success. This was a picture of 1925. It was demonstrated almost throughout all of Europe, and right up until this very day, its subjects are extremely real-time and relevant. Filmography of the 1920s and especially of the 1930s demonstrates that the percentage of plain pictures was insignificant. It mostly consisted of documentary films. Their mass production was remembered by the numerous searches of the so-called documentary view on real-life material. First of all, it concerns the creative work of the outstanding director Dziga Vertov, who created three documentary films that were most criticized by contemporaries in Ukraine. A new documentary filmmaker, Dziga Vertov, presented a fundamentally new creative wave in Ukrainian non-fiction cinema. In 1927, he was forced to come to Ukraine because he had problems with the leadership of the Moscow studios. He was an irreconcilable, fanatical man who defended the cinema as a purely documentary and artistic phenomenon, which did not require any kind of scenario basis. This is Kinoki, a well-known group, that is the film eye group. The group proceeded from the fact that the mechanical, cinematic eye of the apparatus much more strongly and profoundly sees and reflects reality. This is the first position. The second is that editing is a means of creating a new world that does not really exist. In essence, it was the creation of a new reality, which was to provoke and inspire the creation of some higher realities. In 1927, Ziga Vertov was filming 11th in Ukraine for the anniversary of the revolution, which was later labeled by film critics Cinema Fresco Art. The shooting of the 11th took place in very difficult times. An expressive new material for the viewer was searched on the ground, over water, in the air, not in the figurative but in the literal sense of these words. In the film diary, Vertov wrote, they climbed onto the blast furnace, under the blast furnace, and they filmed through the fire, smoke, water and coal dust. In the film The Man with the Movie Camera of 1929, Vertov set the goal of complete purification of the language of cinema and its separation from the language of theater and literature. The Man with a Movie Camera, according to public opinion polls, is generally considered number one in the history of non-feature films. 
Це не означає, що це найвидатніший фільм всіх часів і народів. Ні. This does not mean that this was an outstanding film of all times and nations. It was just an encyclopedia of documentary shooting and how one can make artistic images from reality using editing. There is a tiny episode about how the couple comes to the civil registry office and then another couple comes and gets divorced and their divorce is announced. In the next scene, there are two trams that are moving along the rails in different directions. For an attentive viewer, this artistic image was simply the discovery of an entirely new cinematic world. In contrast to the national film criticism, which accused Vertov of formalism and aestheticism, foreign filmmakers highly evaluated his film. After the man with the movie camera, Vertov was given the place of the greatest cinematographer, and in the West, Charlie Chaplin, Leon Musinak, and a number of other outstanding figures of Western cinema culture wrote about this film. German sociologist and one of the most influential theoreticians of cinema of that time, Siegfried Krakauer wrote, Vertov, through the installation, can put a special meaning into the junction of the fragments of reality. The separate, unconnected elements are shown. An empty garden, a sleeping man's chest, mannequins in showcases, and faces on a poster. Still, no one was able to display on the screen the riddle of these strange hours so skillfully, when life and death change places. It was shown with the view of a surrealist artist, who spies on the mute talk of a fading life with healthy things. The vision turns into a vague dream, and the day comes, and the poster again becomes the most ordinary poster. In 1930, Dziga Verta was the first in Ukraine who created a sound documentary called Enthusiasm, Symphony of the Donbass, in which real industrial and ordinary sounds served to create a musical image and not just visual illustrations. The Symphony of Donbass. Symphony of the Donbass, shot by Ziga Vertov, struck Charlie Chaplin, who was not an admirer of sound cinema. And here he said that this film contained really unusual music of these spheres. The innovator of the movie is the operator Oleksiy Kaluzhny, who in 1926 shot the film Benia Crick, based on Odessa stories by Isaac Babel. He also made documentaries. One of his famous 1930 films, The Canadian Community, is about the advantages of collective farming, based on the experience of the commune of Canadian Ukrainians who returned to the Odessa Oblast. His vision of camera work Kaluzhny outlined in the textbook, the manuscript of which was unfortunately not preserved. Kalushny was a unique person. He developed his own philosophical camera system, which had no analogues in the world. The essence was that the viewer must understand the deep meaning of the screen work exclusively through his image, not using words and plot moves. How he imagined it, we don't know, unfortunately, just now it is impossible to understand, because his only manuscript was lost during the Second World War. Зрозуміти, тому що його єдиний рукопис був втрачений під час Другої світової війни. The fate of Kaluzhny was quite tragic. In 1938 he was sentenced to be shot, but it is known that he was the author of many camera techniques. Він був перший, хто зняв he was the first who took this spinning of trees over the head of a perishing person, which the whole world saw then in the famous brilliant work of the operator Yurusevsky and director Kalatozov, The Cranes Are Flying. Oleksiy Kaluzhny shared his experience with the Russian cameraman Alexander Halperin, who then, as the film experts say, passed it on to Sergei Yurusevsky. The origins of some great cinematographic achievements are still rooted in the activities of these little-known figures of Ukrainian cinema. Ukrainian documentary films production of the 1920s to 1930s, despite the fact that it was required to create an idealized image of the state of workers and peasants, actively searched for the national screen culture, its own cinema language, and tried to gain an understanding of the essence and purposes of cinema which later formed the basis of modern Ukrainian documentary films.